You're probably hearing all wonderful things about Disney's brand new Riviera Resort, but we've got some pros and cons we want to share before you decide to stay there. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today we're going to visit Disney World's newest resort, Riviera Resort, over there, right next to Caribbean Beach Resort, and even on the Skyliner. So this one, like I said, brand new. It's a Disney Vacation Club Resort, but anyone can stay there. You can book the same way you would book any hotel in Walt Disney World. You don't have to have points to stay there, but the only rooms are going to be those Disney Vacation Club Studios, Villas, and Grand Villas. So now before you go ahead and choose to stay there, we want to make sure you know the pros and cons that we noticed on our first few days at Riviera. There's definitely some great things about this resort, and I know people are absolutely touting it right now out there, but there are some drawbacks as well we want to make you aware of. So while you're making your decision whether or not to stay at Riviera, we want to tell you about these five important things, and there's an extra sixth one that we're going to throw in there as well. So starting out, since we're the Disney food blog, we're going to talk about food. Now the food here really does have promise. Our first meal at Riviera was the breakfast a la art with Mickey and friends, where you'll find Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy in some adorable new costumes, along with some seriously gourmet breakfast options. Topolino's Terrace, which is where the breakfast occurs, is definitely a pricier option. Breakfast is 41 bucks for adults, $24 for kids three to nine years old. So the prices here are no joke, and it's similarly priced to the very very expensive Chef Mickey's in Disney's Contemporary Resort, where you also get to meet Goofy and you have an all-you-care-to-eat meal. So if you're comparing the two, the food for breakfast at Topolino's Terrace is miles above a regular Disney buffet. You don't have all those ups and downs of a Disney buffet where you're literally getting up and down a million times, but also the ups and downs of the food. Buffet food isn't always the best, especially at Chef Mickey's specifically. And the atmosphere at Topolino's is decidedly different from that loud, chaotic concourse at the Contemporary. But if your main priority at a character breakfast is to meet the characters rather than have a five-star meal, then Chef Mickey's does have all of your classics. They do have Goofy there. Um, we would probably give the edge to Topolino's Terrace to the breakfast a la art with Mickey and friends simply because it is a higher-end meal. You get to meet four classic Disney characters and the atmosphere is a lot more pleasant for about the same price as what you can get at Chef Mickey's. Now let's talk dinner at Topolino's Terrace. This is a clear contender for date night. The menu offers seafood and meat dishes, handmade pasta and desserts infused with French and Italian flavors, quote unquote, in that rooftop signature dining experience. Now Topolino's Terrace breakfast is one Disney dining plan credit. Topolino's Terrace dinner is going to be two Disney dining plan credits. So it is a signature meal at dinner. And every dish is prepared in their exclusive expo kitchen or wood-burning grill, so it really is a foodie's dream. But also, it's Italian and French, so it's not a crazy adventurous menu. And you can probably find things for pickier eaters here as well. This one has the potential to be one of the top foodie resorts right up there with Grand Floridian and Animal Kingdom Lodge. The cocktails were excellent, the food was fresh and innovative, and we have to compliment the service. Plus, they do have some minimal fireworks views. It's not anything like California Girls fireworks views, but you can see some fireworks from pretty far away at Hollywood Studios and Epcot when you're dining there. Also, FYI, a big tip on this, if you do dine at Topolino's Terrace for dinner and you're not there during fireworks time, you can return with your receipt to see those fireworks. Again, though, not our spectacular show and they do not pipe in the music at the moment. Now, overall, Topolino's Terrace is definitely a fancy meal for both breakfast and dinner. So if you're looking for an exceptional and elevated dining experience, this is definitely a top pick. The rest of the food options at Riviera, I'm not going to go into them in detail right now. We'll get them into other videos, but they are pretty good and they are higher end. So it may not necessarily be a destination for those other dining uh, locations other than Topolino's Terrace, but if you are staying there, you're going to have a good food experience. Now, number two, they do have one food item that I really do want to go into in detail with you, especially if you've been to Disneyland. They do have a Monte Cristo on the menu at Bar Riva, which is technically their pool bar over at Riviera Resort. Now, if you've been to Disneyland, you know that the Disneyland Monte Cristo at Cafe Orleans in Blue Bayou is a quintessential dining experience. It's absolutely amazing. Monte Cristo, if you haven't had one, is basically a ham and cheese sandwich that has been battered and fried. It is absolutely delicious, and if it's done 
well, it's an exceptional dining experience. Now, Disney World used to have Monte Cristo sandwiches a couple of other places, but they've all disappeared from the menus in the past few years. So we're really excited to see something that looks very much like the Disneyland Monte Cristo here. Now, it's not exactly the same. There is a strawberry sauce that is different from the blackberry sauce that is served with the Disneyland version. And the strawberry sauce is actually pre-put on the sandwich, so you don't get to choose whether you have it or not the way you do in Disneyland. And you also can't choose to have just a cheese version of the Monte Cristo the way you can in Disneyland. That said, since we don't have anything else even approximating that sandwich in Walt Disney World, I'm pretty excited that it's there and it should be on your kind of foodie bucket list if you're a Monte Cristo fan. And Bar Riva might just be the best pool bar on property at the moment when it comes to drink variety and quality. Really, really good stuff there. The resort's quick service Prima Piatto rivals some full service spots when it comes to quality. Plus they have real plates and silverware. So again, lots of good options for food here. Number three, Riviera is a great resort if you aren't a park commando. So Riviera Resort is truly for the person who'd rather spend some good time at the resort at the hotel versus go to the parks from rope drop to fireworks every day. There's tons of places to sit, leisurely enjoy a coffee or cocktail. There are fun activities like bocce ball and art scavenger hunt, boat races in the pool. While all resorts have activities, these were much more intriguing and geared towards a full relaxing day at the resort. So if you're a first time visitor who wants to be at Magic Kingdom at rope drop, maybe this isn't your choice, but if you're a seasoned vet who's looking to relax and enjoy some downtime and unique resort activities, this is an excellent pick. So as long as you can stomach that price tag, speaking of, here's number four. It's insanely expensive. The lowest rack rate here is $392 for a studio room in the value season. Now these studios only sleep two people as the only bed is a pull down Murphy bed that transforms what's basically just a sitting room into your bedroom for the evening. So you can either choose to have a couch or a bed in your room. Um, so there's really not a lot of space at all in those $392 rooms, which is kind of crazy to me. And now I was just looking at Riviera for a room in January and those tower studio rooms were $600, which is what I would pay for a much larger room at the Contemporary Resort where I can actually walk to the Magic Kingdom. Um, and walking to a park is not an option from the Riviera Resort. So I was really, really shocked about the pricing here. One bedrooms run about $900 to $1,200 a night. Two bedrooms run $1,300 to nearly $2,000 a night. While the three bedroom Grand Villa starts at $2,600 and goes to $4,000 per night. That's as expensive as the over water bungalows which have the benefit of being a truly unique accommodation over at Disney's Polynesian Resort. And FYI, these are now the most expensive rooms in Walt Disney World. So let's break this down. Rooms at the Yacht and Beach Club and Boardwalk Inn are about the same price as a studio room at the Riviera that only sleeps two people. But the rooms at Yacht and Beach and Boardwalk can sleep four instead of two and you can walk to Epcot or take the Skylander to Hollywood Studios while one bedrooms at the Grand Floridian and Contemporary run about 1200 to 2000 The Grand Floridian max is out at 2500 But that gets you club level access, something that's not even available at Riviera. If you're looking for luxury, you're going to find lower or comparable rates at the Waldorf Astoria and the Ritz Carlton and both on property, they both run about 300 to 600 a night for a standard room that sleeps four people. So basically, we're talking about a resort that is priced sometimes twice as much than Disney World's premier properties, Contemporary Resort, Grand Floridian Resort, which are walking distance or monorail distance to the Magic Kingdom. It's crazy to me. So on top of the high prices, the location is remote. Having the Skyliner close by is great though. This will bring you quickly to Hollywood Studios and Epcot, as well as Caribbean Beach Resort, Art of Animation, Pop Century, but still, it's not a quick walk to a park the way you have at Yacht and Beach Club and Contemporary. So again, you're paying more for much farther away proximity from the parks. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. It just seems way overpriced to me, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. But here's another pro we want to talk about. This resort is beautiful. The high-end decor elements are epic, so if surroundings are key for you in the hotel, this could be a pro. There's no doubt about it. The resort is super elegant, so much so that you may forget you're at Disney World. Although you still have a character breakfast, hidden Mickeys in the carpets, chandeliers, and some gorgeous Disney movie-themed mosaics in the tunnel to the Skyliner. There are two gigantic, arching, hand-laid mosaics featuring designs from Tangled and Peter Pan lining the walkway to the Skyliner. And inside the resort, you'll find more gorgeous artwork as the resort hosts more than 40 original Disney-inspired pieces. 
The resort rooms are just as beautiful as the rest of the hotel, seriously high-end details and finishings, not to mention the truly stunning bathrooms in every single room. Also having the separate freestanding tub and walk-in shower in more than one room per villa is luxury. You'll find this layout in both the two-bedroom and the three-bedroom grand villa. This resort is designed to be the creme de la creme of luxury at Walt Disney World, at least in terms of style and dining, and the price tag certainly matches that. While the Skyliner is a convenience, it's a convenience that can be had at half or a quarter of the price by staying at Caribbean Beach or Pop Century, arguably with a lot less luxury. Now finally, one extra little thing we wanted to talk about. With a huge emphasis on luxury at this resort and the fact that Riviera seems to be set up as a vacation within a vacation, we find it really surprising that the resort doesn't have a spa on site. So that's something to note too. If you're spending this level of money and not have a spa available to you, that's a little different from what we normally see at Walt Disney World. So, absolutely beautiful resort, great food, yay for the Skyliner, but those prices are out of whack. It's just unbelievable to see what the prices are. Um, so I'm interested to see what you guys think, um, but wanted to give you a little food for thought on Disney's new Riviera Resort. I do want to note here that our reviewers who are at the resort literally want to live there now, so that's something. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening and thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog. We can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about Riviera Resort. Are you staying there? Are you going to buy in or is it your home resort? We'd love to hear from you. Looking forward to it and we'll see you real soon.